Community activists are trying to make the housing market work better for people in Boston, especially those at risk for displacement. To advance that agenda, they plan a People's Assembly Saturday, September 22nd, 12 to 4 p.m. at 10 Putnam Street in Roxbury. To tell us about the effort are the coordinator for Right to the City Boston, Darnell Johnson, and the executive director from Alternatives for Community and Environment, Dwayne Tyndall. Thank you both. Very Thank, much. Thank you for having us. I want to start with Darnell. Uh, one big picture you're very concerned about is the mismatch between housing production and the people who live in the city, at least as far as the incomes. What do you see? Well, what we see is um, that housing that's coming is priced at a point that doesn't match the income levels of the neighborhoods that are here. Um, and so what we're asking for is a balance between preserving housing that is affordable long term as well as creating housing that comes in at a price point that matches the incomes of folks here. Trey, what about uh, the mismatch you see in, in Roxbury right now? Well, the mismatch is it's not sustainable. It impacts our families, our working families, and it's pushing families out, not just outside of Roxbury, but outside of Boston and outside to places where the social networks and services does not exist. I guess one other way of looking at this is that because of the recent increases, that I guess the rent you got to pay for an apartment in Roxbury, I mean, you got to make a pretty good amount of money to pay that. You do. Um, and what the numbers from BPDA and the city are telling us is that they're building for that price range right around 80% AMI, which is about $80,000 a year, when their own studies have told us that the average person in Roxbury makes about twenty-five dollars to $30,000 a year. So that all of, already sets up a dynamic of the folks who live in Roxbury are not going to be able to afford this new housing. So then that tells the community the new housing is not for the people that are already there. It's for people who are coming into the neighborhood. That's not the need that the neighborhood has right now. The need that the neighborhood has right now is affordable housing so that folks can stay in their homes, in their neighborhoods. We're seeing that across all the neighborhoods in Boston. Um, we've got groups in Dorchester that are working on um, stuff around Dorchester, um, Dot Block in that area, the new development that's coming in there. The price points of those apartments are outrageous. The people who live there currently who are looking for housing do not make that type of money. And so we are questioning, and what will happen this weekend will be a questioning of who are you really building for? Are you building for the folks that are here in Boston right now, or are you building for folks who are coming in? And when you think about the tax dollars and tax breaks that we give developers and companies to come in and do this development, that's our money of the residents who live here and work here. That's unfair. Fred, I want to ask you an environmental question. Uh, sometimes when people come into the city, they use their cars less often, so that's mm -hmm. good for the environment. But I guess if people f who are here now get displaced and they have to live far from where they work or their people that they want to see, uh, I guess that's an environmental problem too. Well. The way you develop a city, how you plan a city, kind of dictate the environmental impacts. Mm -hmm. And some of these projects are being pushed through very aggressively without any environmental studies and transportation studies. So you almost back on um, traditional transportation modes by developing. So you develop, you increase density, you increase traffic, and now you have to figure out ways to expand roadways. When you expand roadways, you have more air pollutants and many poor communities already dealing with a high asthma rate or, or issues with breathing and so forth. So once you start building vertically without planning, without foresight, it literally impacts the health of residents. And, and of course you get all the congestion, I, I mean, whether it's drivers or, or kids in school buses, I mean, they can't get where they uh, uh, want to go on time. I mean, anybody that's trying to make it through Boston midday see the increase in traffic. It's a great city, people want to move here. But it has to be planned, it has to be sustainable, and it has to be people friendly. Darnell, uh, this meeting is happening almost the same time as another meeting. Uh, and, and instead of a bunch of people saying, not in my backyard, NIMBY, they want to say, yes, in my backyard, <clears throat> NIMBY. So what's wrong with saying yes? <clears throat> we don't have a problem with saying yes. We actually welcome development, but we act, act, welcome development that is equitable and doesn't put pressure on the development, on the dis displacement that's actually happening. Um, we want housing that is affordable, that is um, obtainable by folks now, um, and thinking about development that happens across the neighborhoods and not just concentrating all of the poor people in one area. 
Dorian, I think that there's more to this than just saying that we want a certain amount of uh, this kind of housing for this kind of income. I mean, I guess you want something like maybe some kind of neighborhood review protections that, that might make it work better? We believe in community control, civic engagement. I think it's a better, it makes for a better city and better planning. The more voices that you have around the table, you empower people, you have different ideas, and you can start seeing the bigger picture versus a narrow picture of one project versus the city and the neighborhood. Darnell, what, what about zoning protections? Do you want to see something different from what's in play right now? Um, some of the conversation that's going to be happening on Saturday is going to revolve around special protection zones, um, looking at a way that neighborhoods can opt in to provide services and also special zoning that allows for affordable housing, community control, and equitable development that doesn't displace small businesses, that also looks at those transit areas where high development is coming to keep folks in, their, in, in place right now. Uh, this is BNN News. We're talking with Darnell Johnson from Right to the City and Dwayne Tyndall from Alternatives for Community and Environment. Um, Dwayne, what about uh, what we've learned so far from some of the new housing production in Boston? The, the Rocks JP plan, um, th there's, there's a lot of new construction that's going on right now. I hear about the ripple effects of, of housing prices going up there, and, and yet there are new efforts to, to get more help for people who, who are faced with displacement. Uh, what, what have we learned from that? that the help and the need rarely ever match. It's not sustainable. And we haven't thought about what is the long-term impact on the city. We are riding out this development boom and we want to start having discussions what happened after the boom. We, it's 10 years since the Great Recession. It was not too long ago. We have reminders. We should start thinking about post-development boom and what happens when things fall out. And um, the help is there, but the need is so much greater than the help that has already existed. Darnell, what, what kind of things can be done to make new housing more affordable if it's not coming out of the pockets of developers? Um, there are measures that the city can put in place around making sure that um, development has, the development planning process has residents at the table and understands what the residents really need. It's one thing for a developer to come in and tell us what they want to develop, but it's another thing when the community has the voice to say, this is what we need and how can we work with you to make that happen. There are regulations that the city could put in place around IDP um, and different types of trigger measures that will increase revenue coming in off of the property that can then be turned around to put into affordable housing or preservation of housing in some of the neighborhoods. What about publicly owned land? Uh, Dwayne, there seems to be quite a bit of that in Roxburgh. Wouldn't that be a, a leverage to get more affordable units? Yes, and that's where I think the fight, the ground zero fight, is for community control and community input. We do have, um, we, we have quite a few lots, um, but the, and we are engaging with the traditional systems and planning and so forth, but it's an ongoing struggle to try to still have a community voice to having a more equitable, sustainable development strategy for those public lots. And uh, Darnell, coming back to uh, you, know, there's quite a list of groups around the city involved in this, because we talked a lot about Roxbury, maybe a little about Dorchester, <clears throat> but it seems that almost every corner of the city has this problem to some degree. I guess you've got groups from all these neighborhoods. They too. do. Um, we reached out to nine specific different groups and neighborhoods that are actively right now pushing back against development that's coming. Um, the special planning zoning areas that are being named in the different neighborhoods are causing the abutters and businesses and residents to say, hey, wait a minute, there is, where is our voice? How can we come into the table and actually make plans that help us and don't push us out? So we've got groups from Dorchester, Roxbury, Chinatown, East Boston, Austin Brighton, Fenway, Fenway um, as well as Hyde Park and Mattapan and, um, and there's another group that's forming that's not ready to go public just yet, but they are coming forward um, as well. Dwayne, at ACE, you've always had a lot of youth development going on. Do you have some young activists working on this issue too? Yeah, we have um, youth organizers dealing with um, land acquisitions through urban agriculture in the lots and city lots, vacant lots. So 
we have young people and we're going to continue to engage young people around development and civic engagement to get them to understand that they have power and influence over the process. And finally, Jordan, I wish I'd re remind our viewers one more time about when and where this uh, meeting is going to be taking place. It's going to be Saturday the 22nd at 12 noon at First Church in Roxbury. Um, we're inviting everyone to come out, get there early so that you can enjoy lunch. Um, we do have child care and trans translation services available. Thank you both very much, Darnell Johnson and Dwayne Tyndall. Thank you. Thank